Live from the beautiful Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco, we welcome you to a brand new edition of Cowboys Crosstalk, presented by SWBC Mortgage. As we look ahead to the Dallas Cowboys and the Philadelphia Eagles, week six of the NFL season is upon us, and it's a divisional matchup unlike any other. The undefeated Eagles in Philadelphia, they're going to welcome in a red-hot Dallas Cowboys team. But first, let's introduce what our panel looks like today it's a little bit different this week filling in for kevin gray i'm kyle yeomans glad Yo. to be with you and hopefully we have some fun here over these next 60 minutes or so alongside dallascowboys.com's very own rob phillips rob how's it going very well how are you kyle very much so good and of course we're going into our first cowboys crosstalk together nate newton is a veteran of cowboys crosstalk nate how's it going <laughs> What are you laughing at? We're 30 seconds so into the show. He's so proper. How, how are you doing? Very well. How are you doing, Kyle? <laughs> well, are you? <laughs> We're from the TV side of things, okay, so it's a little I'm bit sorry. different today than I'm normal. Sorry. Just being I'm polite. Sorry. Just okay. being polite. Do you, okay, how, are you, how are you, Nate? <laughs> I'm doing great, Rob. <laughs> Rob got the lavish enunciation. Yes. yes. No <laughs> doubt. Love it. No yes. doubt. And that, uh, that fourth voice you hear is Rocket Ismael, <laughs> former Dallas Cowboy and Hall of Famer from the, the collegiate ranks during your time at Notre Dame. Yeah. Rocket, welcome to the show. First time this season. How's it going? Excellent. Everything is going very, very well. Can I going to clap for Rocket. Yeah, Everybody's got to clap for Rocket. I'm going to clap for myself. Yeah. Clap for myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're live on DallasCowboys.com and on 105.3 The Fan as well in the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network. So, gentlemen, this team is 4-1. and one. Cowboys are 4-1. and one. They have a chance to go for first place in the division Coming up on Sunday Night Football against Philadelphia. Rocket, I'll start with you. You came in red hot wanting to talk about this defense. You're a wide receiver, yet you're wanting to talk defense. Why is that? Well, I am a former Cowboys hater mm -hmm. because I grew up a <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Right, right. And one of the things that I hated about the Cowboys was what was known as the doomsday defense. Right. Mm. I'm here to ask a question. Is it premature to speak the next generation of doomsday is potentially on the scene? Is that, is, am I premature? Am I, am I drunk from the victory over the defending Super Bowl champs? Is, is that where I am right now? I just, I'm asking you guys. What do you think, Nate? You know, this, is, this question was brought to me a couple of days ago, and I want to wait until after uh, Thanksgiving before okay. I answer that. Okay, okay. But we, I will probably see you again before yeah, that. Yeah. Yes, okay. I will. <laughs> so, but I'm like, my boy Rob, Rob. Our, our, our cow, our cow can answer this. I can answer it. I mean, I wasn't around to see the Doomsday Defense. So <laughs> I don't think this is Same. a great place hey. for me to really talk about. And, and believe me, a lot of the guys who are on that Doomsday Defense is not around. <laughs> wow. So, Rob, what do you think? Uh, I was not around either. But, but, <laughs> but, but, what is going on here? Oh. But. I'm going to defer to Nate and Rocket on this, but there's a lot of polls going around on Twitter about this. A new like oh. let, let's name this defense, whether it's Doomsday two or three or whatever. Let's name them something because of the way they're playing right now, though. Okay, wow. maybe, so, maybe they've earned that. I don't know, based off of last year too. Man, they're they're on their way anyway. The things I used to hate about the Cowboys was Doomsday and Captain Comeback. They were always coming back. <laughs> right, they were always right. in the Super Bowl. Yep, they were all, right. so my my mind once. The Rams game was happening, and I'm watching it. Then I rewatched the highlights. I was like, man, this is okay. I was so I don't know how you guys felt after Dak got injured. I was like, oh boy, there it is. And then all of a sudden, you two games, three games, four games. I'm like, wait a minute. What, what the? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? And, and so, because the defense is playing to me, lights out. And when I say to me, I'm a casual observer. I'm not just, you know, like invested like I was when I was playing. Right. But then to see that they're able to, man, what, how many points? We had a uh, 20 something. 22 uh, to 10. Tw 22. Against the Rams? I was like, man, I, I would have thought we, pro if you would have said before the game 22 points was going to win, I was like, oh, you're out of your mind. You crazy. The Rams would have surpassed oh, that at heck some point. Yeah. And so. To be able to handle that kind of pressure, and it was in L.A., it was a uh, it was a surprise to say the least to me, and 
Now that Philly, so another test. We got the, the mighty Philadelphia Eagles up, going up to their place. Um, I'm, I'm really excited, and I don't say that often, but I'm really excited to actually to watch the game, and, and uh, I'm really looking forward to what we really are being revealed, and hopefully what we were last week is what we really are. And that's the really the interesting thing about this whole run for the Cowboys is specifically you've gone up against the AFC reigning champions and the Cincinnati Bengals in week two. Check. Won that game. That was your first win of the season. You've now beaten the reigning Super Bowl champions at their place at SoFi Stadium last week. But yet everybody still says exactly what you're saying. And, and it's got a valid point. Do we really know what this team is, especially offensively behind Cooper Rush? Not without or not with Dak Prescott at this very moment. But, Nate, you're probably the wrong person to talk to because you're one of three people in the world that never pick against the Cowboys. That's Jerry Jones, Michael Irvin, <laughs> Nate Newton. Those are the three people in the entire planet that have never, ever picked, picked against, against the Cowboys. The Cowboys. <laughs> so when you look at this offense, do you think they have an identity at the moment? And do you think oh, they yes. can surpass that at oh, Philadelphia? Yes, they have a they, – the identity in, in – I get knocked around on our po on our podcast shows. I get knocked around at different venues that I do. We have an identity, and thanks to Zeke, it is a physical identity. Yeah. Our offensive line loves where we're trying to go with this. We have an identity that we are a run team due to the fact that we don't have Dak at this time, due to the fact that we completed only 10 passes last week. So we do have an identity. It's defense that's physical and that's ferocious, and there's an offensive line that's willing to block physical, and we've got a running back that opens things up for the, our home run hitter, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, who opens things up for Tony Pollard to be that change of pace guy. So we have an identity, but will it be, as my man <laughs> Rocket would say, <laughs> will, it, will it, the prophecy be fulfilled this week? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. And honestly, that's the identity you had in the 90s. Now, yes. that's a different team, and we're talking yes, about multiple Hall yes. of Famers and all that. Yes. But, but for what Cooper Rush brings to the table and what the defense – Mike McCarthy said it this week, we are a defensive first football team. Right. And this is coming from a coach that going back to Green Bay, offense first with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers and all that stuff – that's playing to your strengths of your football team as your head coach. And so th that is what they're leaning on. That's what they have to lean on until Dak gets back. And even when Dak gets back, there's nothing wrong with having Dak Prescott lean on the run game and, and play to the strengths of this football team, which is the defense and keeping them fresh throughout the game because that's the biggest strength you have. You know, you know I laugh because when, we, when I first heard that coach said, and I think I saw him and heard him with my own ears and eyes, say, in the spring, we really believe that this is where we was going defensively. That's what and they I'm decided, gonna, yes. Yes, that's yes. what it is. And I really think with the loss of Dak accumulated with the loss to, to uh, Tampa Bay really put that in gear. Mm. Don't you think? Because it didn't look like that first game with Dak chunking that ball all over the place that they really believed that the defense was all what it is. Until after that loss. At least in week that. one, it didn't look yeah, like it that. it didn't look like that. And then going into the second week, you really could believe it. And this past week, going into L.A. so far, I like that name, so far. <laughs> Man, it, wow. I'm excited, Kyle. I'm excited. Just There's a lot to be excited about, Rocket. Hey, so to your point, I, and I'm in, well, I wasn't excited. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going to say I wasn't excited <laughs> you first. You weren't excited. But I believe the circumstances right. forced the hand right. for what you said coach thought in the spring would be the identity, at right. least defensively. Right. And so if that is the identity, you know you have to be a team that can run the ball. Yep. And mm -hmm. that that going down forced that yeah. to be made manifest sooner than later. <laughs> so, hey, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it is exciting to, to look at. Now, is there a weakness at this point, at least from what you saw against Los Angeles, and you've seen over these last three or four games, you've been winning these games, but it hasn't been perfect. Rob, when you look at this Cowboys team, where could there be some improvements heading into this week against Philadelphia, where – of course, you're going to have to be nearly perfect. Well, I think Mike said it today in his press conference, agreed with the reporter asking the question. I think it was Ed Werder, and I think Zeke echoed it today. They've, they've got to score more points. I mean, 22, I mean, Rocket used to list it off. 22 points, that's, 
That's great, but that's asking your defense to do a lot, a lot, a lot, week to week, and maybe they can do it. Maybe every single week they can hold teams under 20, but that's asking a lot in today's NFL. I don't want to have any maybes. I just want to have things that are certain. And <laughs> hey, wow. if you say if there's a weakness, my, I don't. I don't need, at my age, I don't need the level of adrenaline and cortisol <laughs> that's released every time the offense gets out there. And it's like, okay, we need this to happen. We need seven. We need six. We need seven. And then maybe a field goal comes out of it, or you get some field position that the other right. team has to right. go 80, 90 yards to put the ball in the, the end zone. So yeah. I don't like the maybe aspect of it, but I'm with you. I agree with you. If, if there is a weakness, being able to for sure put points on the board in a big way, is definitely the glaring one. Yeah, there's a couple ways that you're going to have to do that defensively. You saw it right at the first drive of the ball game. Dorrance Armstrong coming off the edge, strip sack, and then Demarcus Lawrence recovers it and takes it for a touchdown. That type of defense is going to win you games. And we had talked about it. You guys even mentioned it last week on this show, Nate, whenever I went back and listened to it on Cowboys Crosstalk. You said this offense has to score first. Right. You got to go. If you're Dan Quinn, go knock on the door. This yeah. is exactly what yeah. you said. Knock on the door of Kellen Moore and ask him. You got to make sure you score first. Well, That's he didn't right. even have to do that Man, because yeah. the defense went and did it. Yes. What, what? When's the last time you've seen a defense for the Cowboys be able to do that and flex their muscles so early on to where it sets the tone and, as Mike McCarthy has said, set the temperature for this team? I think my second year, a Super Bowl run, our defense was like that. That could take over a game at any time. Because we're a top five defense, basically, like this team is a top five. I think not, not maybe statistically, but when you look at the eye test, they're a top five team. Uh, and to go back to that weakness thing, fellas, I'm, I'm going to continue to say this. And I've said it all last year, and I'm saying it again this year. As much as I love Michael Gallup, as, love, as much as I love C.D. Lamb, they got to learn how to catch the small ball. If they catch the small ball and stop with the drops, of the third and fives or third and sixes, this team can go down the field methodically because you don't have the explosiveness right now because your quarterback can't throw that long ball or your offensive line can't block long enough. So these guys got to take in their heart that every pass is the last pass of their careers and make sure they catch it. So now you can continue to drive because that is where the good teams nowadays can go 13 plays, can go 12 plays back to back to help your defense win games. And that's where we can, if that's where I think we have a weakness at right now. Mm. Yeah, that's really the only weakness. I think on the offensive yeah. side of the football, maybe, yes. maybe a couple things that you can look at. We'll continue to dive into that a little bit forward, but I, I want to come back on the other side of the break and I want to look at this Philadelphia team. What kind of challenges mm. are they going to bring to the table? Because Nate Newton says that this may be the most complete team the Cowboys have faced this year and maybe all year long. But before we go to break at SWBC, customized solutions for individuals and businesses are just a click away. Visit SWBC.com to learn more and to start your next adventure. We'll be back with more Cowboys Crosstalk yes. right after this. Yes.
back, back to SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah, check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. It is a beautiful night here for Cowboys Crosstalk from the beautiful Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco, brought to you by SWBC Mortgage. Join the more than 120,000 customers that we've helped to find their happier way home. Visit SWBCMortgage.com to find a pro today. Back here with Rob Phillips, Nate Newton, Rocket Ismail. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us here on 105.3 The Fan and DallasCowboys.com. And all right, Nate, this Philadelphia Eagles team, 5-0. and Yeah. They're going to yeah. host this Dallas Cowboys team coming up in week six of the NFL season. This is only the third time the third time that the NFC East has had a matchup of two teams with a combined winning percentage of more than 90% wow. at any point in the season, ever. I mean, uh, other than maybe like week one or week two. I think right. it's after week five is the yes. stat. It's only the third time, and it's the first time since 1992. How big of a game is this really for the Cowboys to get a win in? It's huge because the implications of, of where you sit at the end of the year in the NFC playoffs – and do you have a chance to truly win in the NFC East? Because at the beginning of the year, all of us collectively say, oh, man, the East is so weak, man, and Cowboys can sleepwalk through it. Well, all of a sudden, you're not, <laughs> you're not in first place, and you barely, and you're tied for second place. You know, you got one game on the Giants, so here we set. This is a big game. For, for me, mentally, the hostile environment, mm -hmm. I heard Mark Irvin talking about that. Are they going to be prepared for the hostile environment, whether you up or down? Right. Now, are you going to be physically ready to play 60 minutes of football? Because the Eagles require that. Look at their wins and losses. They've been high scoring and they've been close. So they've been straining every week. Now, we've been straining too, but can we get up to catch up? Or can we get down to keep them down? You see what I'm saying? You say it's a maybe. This is the most complete team. Daddies mm. are maybes. Mamas are for sure enough. <laughs> and that is the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, bro. For believe that. What? Yeah. What was that saying? Daddy's baby, maybe. Okay. We, you know, daddy may be the daddy's baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we know the mama's for real. Yes, sir. I, I, I shouldn't have came from the hood like that. Oh. <laughs> that's, that, that's that old hood talk. I'm sorry. That's that old hood talk. I better come back to reality. Oh, yes, sir. Goodness. I'm in the Cowboys Club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rocket, when you look at this matchup, first off, I mean, you've played in Philadelphia. Okay. How tough is it to play in that environment? Philadelphia is a place where you have to go in guns blazing yeah. on every level of mental, every level, with everybody ready to move, everybody ready to move as one unit. Um, I have my thoughts about Philadelphia when I was here uh, are, are nightmares. The first, the, uh, and, and the reason why is because in 99 we went up there and Mike, who was the heart and soul of the team, he goes down like the, I don't know, the, the, maybe in the first quarter sometime and it was just like, you could, it was like, no matter how much you wanted to just be in a mindset where you were like, regardless, we, we got it. Man, it was something I could just if something was missing. And <laughs> I, I was like, oh my God. When Mike, when Mike left, it was like the air went out, the air went out, the helium, all types of <laughs> nitrogen particles. It was crazy. And so so the, I remember that. And then the, right. the, the second time in uh, uh, 2000, I remember on the they were like they they what's your man the def Jimmy Johnson yeah, defensive yeah, coordinator yeah, right, was that right, his name? that's right and I remember he had a certain blitz package where he would just send everybody and we had certain ways and they were there was a zone blitz and I remember I was in short Emmett was going to be off tackle going left I'm on the right side and so I see the defensive end drop back like in a zone kind right. of a disguise and I peeked inside, and I saw Emmett get shut down on the left, and I saw him cut back, and I was like, oh, no, he's about to get got. So <laughs> I, I literally, instead of just going into the secondary, which I was supposed to do, I decided I got to save Emmett Smith. And I remember stepping in front of the defensive end and tried to box him out. And this cat, he, the DN at the time, he's probably about, he maybe was like on the light side of 300, and 
I just remember trying to box him out. And then the next thing I remember, my knee moved in a way that it wasn't supposed to move. Wow. And then I couldn't straighten it out and my season was over. Mm, ACL, wow. MC, meniscus, the whole thing. Wow. So the, my, uh, the reason I brought up all that is because my memories of that environment is, is a hostile environment, to your point, Nate. It's a very hostile environment. And you have to be, like, your mindset will be exposed in regards to who you really are. And if they really aren't the, 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 <laughs> right. if they're not that, Dog. going up into that environment, it, they're going to get everybody. exposed. I'm sorry for everybody who's in their car right yeah. now, yeah. who's listening to this. The and they're just, they yeah. be, man. They're just yeah. driving. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could just imagine a family of four in their <laughs> minivan yeah. just Especially on 635 family. right yeah. now going yeah. down the, the street in hey. Dallas, and they just hear that. We, we just had a Timberwolf sighting in the Cowboys Club. That's Goodness what gracious. Was. You would think they would have gotten those things out of Man, here by now. But, that, but that's, that's kind of the, the environment that Philly is. It's unexpected. And like you said, I'm sorry, first off, to bring up even some of the nightmares <laughs> that you had to go through. We're good. I'm, I'm healed. I'm who, healed. Who, is, who is the one responsible, or who are the people responsible in making sure that the mentality is right going into Philadelphia and going into this matchup. So I'm going to uh, go to you, Nate, on that, be defer to you on that, just because I don't know this team, other than from the peripheral, I don't know the guys on this team, what makes up, I would think Demarcus Lawrence would be one of those guys, but like, who are the leaders? Who are the guys? I don't, I don't really know. It, it, it's, first of all, it's going to come from your defense and your offensive line. That mentality. Now, is, is your offensive coordinator going to buy in? Well, mm. he's bought in because of how they play. This, this thing of culture comes from how the coaches practice, what, what they stand for and don't stand for. But it's up to them players. It's up to can we get – it'll be nice if we can get Wilson to come right down the middle mm. of that field and just increase one of them running backs early. Donovan Wills, it would be nice to see Michael just rip through the quarterback. I mean, with, even, if he get, even, if, yeah, even if he get a penalty, don't hurt the quarterback. Just rip through him and take it, just flip it, just flip it. I mean, a play like that would set the tone, but these players got to feel that way coming out of that locker room, man. Yeah. They got to feel that way coming out of that locker room that we will not be beat physically. Uh, and that is what scares me about this Dallas Cowboys team is do they have that? I know they didn't have it last year, but do they have that now? We cannot be beat physically. You may out-athlete us, but you will not out-physical us. And that, nope. that's, boy, that's a, that's a hell of a mentality to have. Mm. What I, I would like to see, just when you talked defensively, I would love I, – and I believe they can do it. I believe uh, uh, D-Law, uh, Micah – can make and what uh Jalen, what's his yeah. this is the second year? Or is this the third year that, or second year? Hurts. Um Jalen Hurts, third, third year. Third year. Third year. Third okay, year. so he's out he's in he's really outside of that, you know, young quarterback uh mentality. So but they can still make him see ghost. Yes. If they make if like if they can do things to make him see ghost which is like he's flinching or he's like, okay, here they come. If they can, like, just get next to him or, or touch him or uh, mm -hmm. early, that would go a long way in setting the mentality as well. Where would they have to do that, Rob? With their speed? I, I, I don't I, – I bet the Eagles have not faced the defense yet. They faced some good ones early, but not right. with the speed yeah. of this Cowboys front at all three levels. Like, this is mm. – I don't know, Nate, what you think. This is probably the fastest defense for the Cowboys I've oh, seen man. in years. Oh. I, going back to just all three levels, yes. I mean, we, we had a player here, a player there. We had D-Law. Uh, yeah. I mean, DeMarcus Ware. Yeah. yeah. But I'm talking about straight getting it. I mean, four-barrel carburetor getting it. We ain't <laughs> had that in a while, man. I mean, you have we Sam ain't. Williams, who's a second-round pick, who's barely getting on the field. Like, he got 25 snaps last week. You see his speed. You see how he can close and finish right. plays. He could barely get on the field right now as a second-round pick. I think that's it. But Rocket's right. Like I think, I think Tank's the guy that you start with that mm. that comes onto the field with that mentality throughout the week, through the games. He's been enough of these games. 
And on the other side, Jason Peters, we'll see about his status this week at the guard position. He's played in Philly a long time. You know, nine what? Pro Bowlers. He, he knows. He <laughs> knows what that. this is like. You know. <laughs> Don't do that. Well, why? Wait, wait. Why, why not? That? Let's go with what we got. We got a rookie at the left tackle. We got uh, McGovern at the left guard. We got uh, Biotis at the center. We got All World at the right guard. We got uh, Steele at the right tackle. Let's ride with that. I'm fine with that. I mean, like, helping the guys get oh, the right mentality, mentality. Yeah. of coming into this game. But I'm going to tell you something, man. The people that can get the mentality going is the people that's going to be on that field, man, that's going to be rocky. And, 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 and that's, I mean, even that can be ya, 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 ya. But he's not on the field. But, but I'm telling you, when number 90 Jordan Davis sit up on that center, and when, when, when number 91, Fletcher Cox, set up on that right and left guard and be like, yo, what oh, you got? Yo. They ain't going to look back and say, Dak, you ride? No, they going to look back at Coop and say, Coop, are you ride? And Coop going to say, hell yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. While I hand the ball off to this guy right here. <laughs> <laughs> number 21 and number 20, yeah. get after yeah. it. Thank you very much. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I get what you're saying, but – I also understand what Rob's yeah, saying as well, because saying, but yeah. Jason Peters even said it today. It almost felt like he was trying to set a tone when he was right. talking to the media today. Now he said some words that we can't say on this air because right, it's right. FCC regulated. Right. Mm. But there's there's things that he's doing now, even in practice and in the locker room, that is helping these guys prepare mentally for what they're about to go into. And they see Philly every year, right? The concrete they see Cowboys. they go to Philly. Yeah. They go to Lincoln Financial. They're up there all the time. But why is this year different, Rocket? Just based off of the records, is it, or why is it different? It's different because both teams, I believe, have exceeded preseason expectations. And I don't know anybody, and I don't know if any of you guys thought that the Eagles were going to be like this. I, a, a little bit thought the Cowboys were. However, once it, after the, the first game, I was like, oh, wait a minute. Well, maybe we got some well, even way to go. That, even before the first game happened, if you would have told me you're 4-1 and one after the first five weeks when you played the Bengals and the Rams, who were both in the Super Bowl last year, I'd take it. Yes. I'm here. Oh, I'm yeah. all, I'm all yes. for it. So I, I feel like the, the preseason expectations and where they actually are, everybody in the league is – Pleasantly surprised and excited to see this matchup. Yeah. That's why. It's a national matchup, Rob. Well, yeah, and the NFC East is the best division in football right now, based on record. <laughs> say say that, that again. That hasn't been in Can a you say while, that again? Bro. I would love to just hear that one the more time. The NFC East is the best division in football mm, right now. 14-6 right and six combined record. And what's funny about it, Nate, is that going into the season, the four teams with the easiest schedules on paper this year was all the NFC East teams because they're all playing each other right. because they all struggled <laughs> last year. Right, right. Except for Dallas, obviously. Right. And Philly had a good team, but but obviously Washington New York struggled. It's a it's a shift. And it's kind of back to like you mentioned ninety two. This is yeah. this is the last time we saw the division this good this wow. early in the season. And yeah, it's it's big be, be, because it's not so much the records, overall records, it's one and zero Philly in division versus two and zero Dallas in the division right now, mm. and you know this thing's going to go all the way to the end. And who's going to get the early upper hand on the tiebreaker? That's really what it comes down to. No, you're exactly right. This is the fourth time since the realignment of the divisions in 2002 that a, t a division has at least three teams that have started four and one or better. It's only the fourth time that that's happened since 2002. So last 20 years, there's only been four occurrences across football, not just the NFC East, that three teams have been four and one or better in the same division. So there's a lot of competition looking forward. Now, when we come back, let's talk a little more about the ground game and this offensive line, whether or not Jason Peters is ready. There are some decisions to be made up front and a couple guys for the Cowboys that will look to get back in the fold as we head into week six. More Cowboys crosstalk presented by SWBC Mortgage is on the way. But first, SWBC PEO helping to alleviate the HR and administrative burden that comes with running a business. Leave the worrying to us. Visit SWBCPEO.com to find out more. More to come from the Cowboys Club right after this on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
back, back to SWBC Mortgage's Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah. Check this out. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. From the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco, it is Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC. Rob Phillips, Nate Newton, the three-time Super Bowl champ, six-time Pro Bowler. We've got our Cowboys legend, Rocket Ishmael, here from the Star in Frisco. I'm Kyle Yeomans. Glad you're with us on 105.3 The Fan and, of course, DallasCowboys.com. Now, we've got a legendary offensive lineman. We've got a legendary wide receiver. So we're going to talk offense here for the Dallas Cowboys moving forward. Cowboys 4-1. It hasn't looked great on the offensive side of the football. Just 102 yards through the air last week for Cooper Rush and company. Nate, it, this is an opportunity for them to show that they are going to get back on track, that they are going to have an opportunity for this offense to click, even without Dak Prescott in the fold. But it starts up front. You mentioned your starting five offensive linemen. Why do you think you should stick with Connor McGovern over Jason Peters, if Jason Peters is healthy going into the week. You know, Kyle, we do uh, several shows together, and and I've always expressed this. I need five guys that are stable, and I need the same five guys so they can work together, especially on the left, sky, left side when you have a young left uh, tackle that's trying to, trying to build his uh, confidence and get his technique better. And I don't care if it's Jason Peters, but I need him for 65 plays. I don't care if it's Connor McGovern, but I need him for 65 plays. I don't need all this switching in and out. And still, you got the center got to deal with that, with that uh, unevenness is what I call it, because now you're getting on different levels. When you're coming off, I want to know that when I'm deuce blocking, when me and you getting hip to hip, side to side, that me and you, I know when, what you're seeing is the same thing I'm seeing. You know, on, we only get that through repetition. Rep Repetition. Repetition. Thank you. It ain't a repetition, <laughs> but repetition. And, and I need that. I need to know that you're going to snuggle up with me as a center, and we're going we gonna to do this dude. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't going to talk about it when we go up to the linebacker. You know what I'm saying? Because we're seeing the same thing. But if we got four or five different guys and we're getting off too soon, and I'm going to leave you hanging, you're going to be overextended, and now I got a running back, a quarterback saying, hey, man, what's going on? I got an offensive coordinator saying, you know what? We can't do this because these two guys. I need some continuity, man. How big is that continuity, Rocket? I know you're, you were on the offensive side, but not necessarily an offensive lineman. But it feels like it is, that is a, a common yeah. topic, especially around the last couple of years for the Cowboys, is having continuity up front. How big is that for an offense to just complete itself as a whole? There is no offense in the NFL – Unless your quarterback is a super athletic and get out of three or four guys way at one time, and that can last for maybe a year, year maybe two years at the most. Uh, but there's no offense in the NFL that succeeds at a, at a very high level that doesn't have some type of continuity off on the offensive line to start off with. And football is one of the unique sports in that way. Like, you could have a dominant pitcher in baseball. You could have a Michael Jordan in basketball. You in football can have, you know, C.D. Lamb on one side. Um, man, you could have Michael Irvin on the other side. You could have <laughs> Troy and the dog on backfield throwing right. to him. And if the old line isn't put together like Nate's old lines were back in the day, you're going to have trouble against some formidable opponents. So it's very it's, – it's like – Priority number one. The thing about it is, Mark Tourne, free agent, UCLA, defensive lineman, coming out of college. Nate Newton, coming out of Florida a and defensive lineman, moved offensive line. You got Mark Stepnoski, third round pick. You got uh, uh, John Giesick, dra uh, I don't. We got him from the Raiders in the trade. We got uh, Kevin Gogan outside. Mm. None of us were considered all world guys. But we had Tony Wise, the offensive line coach, that overworked us to the point where we knew and felt what each other did. And so we were, we were right. We knew on our deuce blocks or our, our tray blocks or whatever the block was, how each guy was going to play it. Our, our tool, he could say, I need a hand, I need a hand. 
you know, and I would put my hand out there to make sure that Lawrence Taylor would see that mm. so he wasn't just blitz inside. Or I tell Tua, I need a hand, I need a hand, because Jerome Brown's sitting under wide Ooh. three technique, and Those he are put two his hand out there. names to be going up what? again. Yeah. yeah. Communication better be on point. Man, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's yeah, talking about iconic names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, oh, but, 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 I, but I'm trying to tell you is <laughs> Philadelphia has Fletcher Cox. And they had Jordan Davis, and they have Hargrave. Brandon Graham. Yeah, Brandon Graham on the outside. Yeah. You know, and, and a lot of these guys want to be silent. Like, I, I'm not going to let me, I was not let Tyron, Tyron, Tyler Smith mm -hmm. go out there. And, and I'm like, yo, bro, if you don't know who to block, and we got to point it, D, dude. Do it. Do it. Yeah. I'd rather for you to know that I'm coming at you, and I got to block you. Then to sit up there and let this kid block down with me and a guy in the end uh. just come wide open on the end. No, ask me, man. Let's get this. I used to do it a step. Hey, step, who you got? And we just point to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> who you got, step? Who you, uh, I'm serious. Exactly. Who you got? But that but, comes with reps, right? Together, yeah. Together. Yeah, together, man. Yeah. And, and we, we even built a little, you know. I mean, we had our little spy games. You know, we had our little cryptic words and everything of who I got. I mean, because I wasn't doing no study. I'm, I was I'm kind of shocked you know what the word encrypt means. Yeah. Encrypt is like a – I feel oh, like that's a, not a normal word. I couldn't spell word. it, but I knew what it meant. <laughs> Me neither. I don't think I could either. He could feel what the yeah, word meant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Because of the communication. Yes, that's what it yes. is. Rob, you watch the tape. You watch the film as well. How would you grade out what Connor McGovern has done at the left guard spot and, and – is he the right guy for the job right now over Jason well, Peters? Well, I think he's had some good moments. I mean, I'll defer to Nate on that, yeah, but I, I think sure. he's had some good moments. I thought they did some nice things against Aaron Donald, which is not an easy thing to do uh, last <laughs> Sunday. Um, I think with Jason Peters, the plan, at least from an outsider's view, is ramp him up game to game to where he could take that job eventually. And I'm, but I'm with you. The rotating, that's just not normal on the offensive line. And then he gets hurt. So maybe it is Connor McGovern's job for now, but I think they've got to need, they need some stability there because you do have a 21-year-old left tackle next to him, and I think having a, a, a steady veteran presence there is important consistently. So is that Peters or McGovern? Because McGovern's I, had the snaps, but Peters has had the experience. So you have two thoughts of mind there. Well, I think, it just, but it comes down to availability. I mean, Peters is Good banged point. up right now. He he says he'd be ready to go. We'll see. There's been a ramp-up thing required with him. I think there's been some conditioning that he's needed. I mean, he didn't have an offseason at all. Yeah. So I think, you know, all things being equal, I think Jason Peters' experience is what you would want in there. But Connor McGovern plays. for 60 plays, but I that hasn't been 60, 60 yeah. plays. Physically, is he ready for that, though? He's yeah, got to be. That's the he's I mean, this week, si oh. this week yeah. six. This week six, we got him on the, in the first week, right? Yeah. And so he's ramped Oh, yeah, he should be. He should be ready to – even if he goes in there, let him go 50 plays. And if he get tired, throw McGovern at the end of the game. But don't this in and out, this in and out. Because now you got to look. Can he pull like Connor McGovern? Can he wrap around and get out in the open space? Can he still do that? I remember he used to do it at Philadelphia. Yeah. But that was 20 years ago. Okay, can he still do that? Can he, and, and I need to know this. But don't 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 keep playing this game because the season ain't gonna get lighter. Mm, Everybody's oh, only gonna get better. Yeah. What do you think, Rocket? I, I I agree. I'm just thinking about when you talk about the conditioning, and though it's week six, and I was in my mind like, oh yeah, week six, you should be fine. I, however, the emotion mm -hmm. yeah. that comes with the game and right. just that you can't replicate a lot of times in practice. However, because of being a veteran and knowing how to get yourself ready, that could be a, a, a factor in there. But I am, I'll be concerned conditioning-wise, especially with this type of environment that we're going into yeah. and being in yeah. and out, in and yeah. out. I think one of those guys is going to be better than joint, both. <laughs> Uh, it's a topic of yeah. conversation, yeah. certainly, and I, I think it's going to continue even past this week. Even once this week comes to a close, I think it'll continue because Peters does give you depth on the offensive line. Now, when we come back, I want to hear from Rocket on just how he thinks this wide receiving core has lived up to expectations, surpassed, or maybe not so much. We'll talk about that when we come back. More Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco in a moment on the Dallas Cowboys Radio Network.
SWBC Mortgages Cowboys Crosstalk. Cross yeah. Broadcasting live from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. Liberty Tax is a proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Schedule an appointment today at libertytax.com slash cowboys. It's the final segment here of Cowboys Crosstalk presented by SWBC from the Cowboys Club at the Star in Frisco. We've got a fantastic crowd tonight on yes. hand, by the way. Yes. So how about that? Give it up for everybody that's made it out tonight. Everybody's been loud. They've been excited. They're excited about this matchup on Sunday Night Football, and who wouldn't be? We're going to give our predic predictions coming up here in just a couple of moments. But Rob Phillips, Nate Newton, Rocket Ismael, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Now, Rocket, this wide receiving core, lots of expectations for CeeDee Lamb coming into the season. Michael Gallup out for the first couple weeks of the season. Now he's back and ready to go, at least seemingly for the weeks to come. James Washington working his way back. Jalen Tolbert's been on the inactive list four out of five weeks. Have the wide receivers lived up to your expectations or where would you grade them to this point in the season? At this point, <clears throat> my expectations were that if you're wearing the number 88 for the Dallas Cowboys, mm. you have 88 expectations and ability, and that hasn't manifested yet the way I would expect. I'll, and when I say that, I, when, when you have 88, even if the other team has – Say that sometimes they double team your roller coverage your way or put their best guy on you, whatever. You're still going to get yours, even if it's not in bunches. You're still going to get yours. And I, for me as a receiver, looking at them, I'm like, okay, well, not yet. And so then with um, Michael being down, I there are some number ones who, with a tandem, then that that really helps. And I do know that Michael has explosive capabilities in him. So. Only one game back. I expect each game it's going to get better as far as so like what, what he does. I, I do. You I, like I, I heard what he before. does. I'm okay but, with that. I like but, Gallup too. But just so I understand <laughs> the, the conditions overall. If I'm my what my expectations were coming into the season, just from a receiver standpoint, I would say maybe a C, mm. uh, maybe C plus at the best. Yes. That that would be how I would But you still have hope is kind oh, of where, no. I, I, definitely, where man, I feel I you're feel going. Like, and the reason I say there's so much potential, it's, it feels like the potential is just like we just have to draw it out and we have to be like, and what is this, like year two? Yeah, uh, yeah three for. Uh, it's three for Mike and, and uh, what's it's four or five for Mike, Mike. it's three for CD. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the third okay, year yeah. for CD. So about this time now, I w it would have been cool if that didn't go down, but um, about this time, this is when you start, like, becoming yourself, if you will. And so because of those expectations, that's the only reason I say, but there's nothing in me that doesn't feel like rising to the occasion isn't in them, mm -hmm. that, they, that that potential is there, but we don't want it to be potential for long. We can't <laughs> afford it to just be potential. We got to see that thing manifest. Got to yeah. find a way, Rob. Yeah, and, and, and CD has progressively put up some numbers here, but I think Nate hit on it earlier. Especially when you're backup quarterbacks in the game, you got to make sure you're hitting every single play for them. And there were some missed opportunities against the Rams that did cost them, right? But right. Gallup makes a has a great route on third down, drop. Now he made up for it later, but he could that could he could still be going at that point with right. with the route he ran there. CD with a drop near the sideline. When you have your backup in the game, you got to make sure you're making and Rocket knows you got you got to make every <laughs> single play you can for him. Now, and go ahead, you. <laughs> Fellas, it's, I don't sweat a lot of things. I'm always about joking. But Mike Irvin has taught me those five and outs, those the short digs, them short turnarounds, those are the player plays that make you the player. Where, 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 receive, where defensive backs be like, this is going to be an all-day. And that's what the 88s of the past have done. This is an all-day job. And CD is going to get there. I've always defended him. I will continue to defend him. If somebody can get in his head and say, man, if you catch that quick slant or if you, you know, he's shown he could do it when they had this, the CD deal a couple of weeks ago where he just, the dude almost literally killed him. And he still yeah. came up with the ball. That's concentration as a number one he has to continue to have all the time. It's like what Cooper Cup does for yeah. L.A. You know what's going to him. You know right. he's, he's running a certain route. He's doing a specific thing but he still catches the football. How tough is that to manifest 
in a receiver who may have all the talent and all the athleticism in the world, but he just hasn't shown that consistency yet. It's, it's not tough because you have the ability. It is tough because if it hasn't consistently come to fruition, then all of a sudden you, you, might, be able, you might get in your head. Right. So I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep it on that. The other thing I wanted to say is that when you have a young quarterback, and oh, I, I, I count Cooper Rush as a young quarterback, and especially uh, the backup guy, the, the, uh, the strong running game is his best friend, and a, a good tight end or a good slot receiver is his best friend because that the tight end and the, and, the, and the slot, they're usually in front of him, and he can get the ball out quick and not have to worry about getting crushed if the offensive line doesn't have that yeah, continuity yeah. that we were talking about earlier. So uh, from, a, from a tight end perspective, I would definitely like to see them get more involved and be uh, focal points uh, in this week coming up as well. Man, I, I could spend a whole hour talking about the tight end position. I really could because there's, there's so many levels to that with these two young guys, with Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot and then Dalton Schultz on the franchise tag. But then you're bringing in a couple guys, Seth Green off the street, signed to the practice squad this week. That is a huge point for this offense. But we are running out of time. Mm. So here on Cowboys Crosstalk, it's time to give your predictions. They do it every week. Rob Phillips, Cowboys, Eagles, Sunday night football, up at the link. Who you got? Usually I have till Friday. I got to make a pick. You got to make a pick right oh, now. Man. You can do it on Talking Cowboys Friday. I'll take I'll take the Cowboys because I until the defense doesn't do it and uh. and, and play the way they're playing, <laughs> I'll ride with the defense until they don't. It, this is the toughest matchup yet, and the I said earlier the offense is going to have to do more. I think mm. we talked about the run game, but in addition to that. They got to hit some chunk plays down the field in the passing game, get some points on the board. But I'm going to keep riding with the defense until until I'm going. I'm going Cowboys. I'm going defense getting better, more from the receivers to go along with a potent running game and a consistent running game that we we can rely on. Tight ends in there. Do we have to give a score or no? Uh, no, you don't have to okay. give a score because okay, I was going to say is I would. You can if you want. Okay, I, I'm thinking 24 for us. And for them, I'm going to – I'm like uh, 16. That's a very mm. Cowboys-esque mm. score. Wow. Nate, who you got? A Cowboys forever. <laughs> for life. That's, that's one, the score, bro. One point. Yeah. One, one, one point. to nothing. <laughs> one to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. 52, 51. You wow. Know, 48, 49. If it's the Cowboys 52 win. to 51, yeah. I will learn how to do a backflip in front of you in the middle oh, of okay, the right. Cowboys club. Right. Okay, yeah, hold it to don't it. Throw it you back to it. I mean, you got your fiance out there. Yeah, she's out there. She's <laughs> laughing. She's like, you couldn't do a backflip. If you learned how to take a year. Rocket, it's been so fun getting to sit with you for a little bit and get to kind of pick your brain back and forth. What's been going on in your world, and what's coming up next for you? What's coming up next for me is I am going to be a better parent mm. in regards to raising young adults, especially the kind of young adults where they don't really have to listen to what you say, but you still got to <laughs> pay for a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm improving in that area of my life. My wife and I tag team. Mm. We've been married uh, 27 years right. now. So uh, that's what's next. That's the next great adventure. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> hey, uh, that's as real of an answer as you will ever yeah. get on this show. And I, I absolutely respect that. It has been so much fun. Rocket, thanks so much for joining us here on Cowboys Crosstalk. Rob Phillips, you can catch him on DallasCowboys.com. He's on Talking Cowboys every single day along the way. And you can, of course, catch his work on the website throughout as well. And Nate Newton, you've got a pregame and postgame show coming up yes, this week. Pregame wow. live. You can catch him on Open Hanging with the Boys. Itself, that's the new word. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Manifest. <laughs> yeah. Encrypt. You can encrypt. Yeah. That's what you were talking about a little bit ago. Come to fruition. And <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> this has been so much fun here over the last hour. Hope you had as much fun as we did. For everybody that was a part of this broadcast on Cowboys Crosstalk, we'll be back next week. Oh, oh. For Rocket, for Nate. For oh, Rob oh. Phillips, I'm Kyle Yeoman. So long, everybody. <laughs> this has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about you, Cowboys? Yeah!